Welcome to the Solid Signal podcast for the week of February 20th, 2017. The subject this week is the death of the gadget. Now, of course, last month I went to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas where there were tons and tons and tons of gadgets, so it may seem rather strange to think about the idea that gadgets themselves are dead, that they are unnecessary. First, a little bit of background, just because I think it's kind of fun. From what I understand, the term gadget actually comes from the days when the Statue of Liberty was so new and it was a tourist attraction, and vendors used to sell little novelty items, pencil sharpeners, storage boxes, that sort of thing, that looked like the Statue of Liberty. Most of these, or at least many of them, were made by a company named Gaget, or named for a man named Gaget, and they came, they came to become called gadgets, because they're just little doodads, little knickknacks that do something um, that isn't incredibly necessary, but is kind of neat to think about. Twenty years ago, gadgets were all that we ever really wanted. Gadgets were things like remote controls, and GPSs, and electronic calendars, and digital cameras, and all those things camcorders and, and electronic book readers, all those things that have been since replaced by a smartphone. So this is why the question is, is there even room for gadgets in our modern world? Or can we just do almost everything with an app on the smartphone? Well, the truth is we can do an awful lot with an app on a smartphone, although I personally end up having a lot of multiple devices lying around me because I think that it's better sometimes to have good special purpose devices than mediocre uh, sort of jack of all trades type devices. And the world seems to kind of agree with me because as stubbornly as phones have taken hold, and let's be honest, the smartphone is the defining uh, piece of electronics of the 21st century thus far, it has not destroyed the market for remote controls, for digital SLR cameras, for larger display devices like laptops. Oh, certainly it's eaten into that sort of thing, and it's made it possible to get away with not having those things for short periods of time. But if you ever want to get serious, then you tend to stay, take a step away from the smartphone and towards something that is actually designed to do exactly what you want. And it seems to me that we are actually starting to see a whole new class of gadgets, things that a smartphone interacts with but can't replace, and I'm talking about the final, eventual rise of smart home stuff. You know, 10 years ago, I didn't want an internet-connected refrigerator, and I was right then. But more and more people actually want them, because it turns out here's something you can do with an internet-connected refrigerator. You can have it take a picture of what's in it and send it to you so that you remember what kind of milk that you buy, or the fact that you don't have any milk at all. You see... We're finally starting to see devices that do something intelligent with their connectivity. It's not just a matter of find my keys. It's a matter of, you know, did I leave the oven on? Do I actually have cheese in the refrigerator? Is my washing machine ready to go? Is it the right temperature? Is it the right comfort level in my home? This is the kind of thing that smart home devices are working on. And of course, let us not forget all of the voice integration. So if you're too lazy to actually get up and turn the lights on, you can do it with either your phone or yet another gadget, something like an Echo Dot. See, I think that the idea of the gadget, even though it's only about 125 years old, is strong enough that it's going to outlast this continual attack from the smartphone. And for better or worse, those little electronic gigaws, as it were, are going to be with us for a long time. And I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't ask you to think about SolidSignal.com when you were thinking about shopping for these sort of things or for accessories for your smartphone, for that matter. Sorry, commercial over. Mostly importantly, though, is when we look at something uh, gadget-related, is to make sure that it not only does what we want it to do, but what we think it will, we will want it to do in the future. If we don't do that, what we're going to end up with is piles and piles and piles of useless gadgets stuck in landfills or warehouses all across the country, and when that happens, nobody wins. It makes future electronics more expensive to manufacture and creates problems if we decide that we want to recycle. Have a great week. Music